Welcome to the Cherry Picker, the horror movie podcast where we like to kill people, but not really. I'm your host, Zach Cherry, and with me as always is... Mr. Sims! Oh, Mr. Sims! Mr. Sims! Eddie of Edward is Truth. And today we're talking about... (laughs) (laughs) Silent Night, Deadly Night. Because, yeah, we are. Because it's the holidays, and why not? Uh, Burr, this I'm cold. Movie, it's early <laughs> as well. We're recording this in the a.m. Uh-huh. As opposed to the p.m. But, um, yes, yes, <laughs> just, just woke up. But th- this movie came out November 9th, 1984. Mm-hmm. Which, incidentally, it was the exact same release date of A Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this was the one that got kind of, like, uh, chastised and even uh, boycotted by the religious right and everything. because, Or not even the religious right so much. It's just, I guess, the conservative Right? I mean, oh, they're really? both one and the wow. same. Well, I oh, mean... Oh, because how I, dare they taint the image of Santa Claus? It's nothing sacred. That was a question that kept getting asked over and over again oh, by reviewers. Really? Was Yeah. So it had and nothing like, to do with, like, the Catholic orphanage and... and... Uh, <laughs> you would think, but... I th- uh, but really, people were, I think, because a lot of people were taking it at face value also, just like their gut reaction when they see that poster of the arm mm. wielding the axe, like outside of the chimney and is, you know. This is not the first, like, Killer Santa movie, to my uh, I, knowledge. There was one that came out a few years earlier. Apparently, this is yeah. the first one to really register on people's radar because. It was doing well. Like, mm. <laughs> like people were going to see it, and I guess maybe that upset, you know, some critics, too. Like, there started to become a weird movement. It's all on the Blu-ray uh, for the movie. Like, they go into, like, the the, the, the week-to-week kind of, like, box office life that was uh, okay. pr- just prolific, you know? It was just I mean, it, was, it wasn't prolific. It wasn't, like, a, a blockbuster, but it was, yeah. you know, it was building its audience. It was a, so sleep, a sleeper hit. Is, do you think that... Perhaps it was like the controversy that made this movie oh hell yes. so popular because I was watching. I mean, I've seen this movie a few times, uh, and yeah. I own it. Uh, like, I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna lie and say that I I don't. Like, I've I've owned this movie in my collection for a while. I used to have the there's like a DVD box set of I think just the first two at least because I've only seen uh. the first two. Um, but I got the the Screen <laughs> Factory Blu-ray because you know why not. Um, yeah. And I don't know. I just I'm not a fan of this movie. I I <laughs> I, I mean, granted, like, cause I was watching it the other night in preparation for this, and I'm just like, okay, I can see the charm. I can see because I was kind of maybe more so reminded of something like Terrifier to like today's audiences, where it's just like yeah. some ridiculous. Like it's not trying to take itself seriously. Like it goes to dark places, but it's just still like it, it's it's fun at heart. You know, it's it's like Christmas. It's like a kid on Christmas, and <laughs> <laughs> I like I, I was watching it. I'm like, okay, like I I see what they're going for. Like at times, it's just like what like tonally, it's it it, it kind of shifts a bit. But the thing is, like, this movie just looks, like, it came out in 1984. It looks, like, at least, like, five to ten years older than that. Like, it's not, it, it, like, it's not a pretty movie. <laughs> oh, no, 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 not at all. But yeah. um, uh, uh, before we get into that, you want me to give you a premise? Yeah, please, because I don't even know what this movie's about. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe this will help break it down for okay. you. <clears throat> okay, thank you. After being warned by his senile grandfather that Santa Claus punishes all little children who are naughty, little Billy witnesses his parents' violent murder by a criminal on the run, dressed as a Santa Claus. Now Billy is 18 and out of the orphanage where he has suffered subsequent abuses under the watch of a pious mother superior. As Christmas rears its ugly head and after a series of unfortunate triggers, Billy unleashes lethal rage and judgment as an axe-wielding Santa Claus, now set free to wish everyone a silent night, deadly night. Uh? (laughs) 
Are you, are you Mother Superior? I... Yeah. Okay, yeah. Just, just making I, sure. <laughs> I am a stan of calling him Santa Claus and not calling him Santa Claus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but do you recognize the actress at all? No, who was it? Because you've seen Friends, like, more than once. She was Joey's uh, grandmother, who he brought into the apartment to watch his uh, uh, performance on, uh, I think it was Law and & Order. And she, yeah, because she was talking about Sam Waterston and everything like okay. that. And she couldn't say hello, but she could say Capricorn 1. And <laughs> Did, and but it wasn't like him, Joey got he, cut. It wasn't him on Law and Order. It was like because he didn't get the part, right? They they just no. He got like, the part, but they cut him. They cut him oh, out right. of the show. Yeah, and, but but then like someone <laughs> came to probably like Chandler like came to the rescue and put on like a home video and and fooled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, very he, Joey <laughs> Joey escaped. She was like, oh Joey, my big fat Joey, and just you know. Like, <laughs> and they kept trying trying to fool her like other ways, yeah. and she just sat there waiting and waiting, and she didn't speak any English and. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, she she obviously speaks English. The only the career. only like person that like popped up like other like obviously uh, Linnea Quigley is is in yeah. it. But uh, the only person because I I was watching him just like huh he looks familiar <laughs> that I did like the, uh -huh. the immediate IMDb and the her boyfriend is played by uh, it's like Leo Geeter. Or Jeter? Leo Geeter or Getter. G I don't know how yeah. you pronounce his last um, name, but Tommy, who, Tommy, yeah. Yeah, who played Barry Sims in Halloween 6. Barry uh, Sims! Radio, radio. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but yeah, yeah. he's... Uh, uh, there. There's some other people who have like done some other things. Um, the Grandpa is played by Will Hare, and I don't know if you're as much of a stand for Back to the Future as I am, but he's Old Man Peabody... The man who uh, had the Twin Pines, where they built the Twin Pines mm -hmm. Mall, where when Marty goes back in time, spoiler, yeah. when Marty goes back <laughs> in time and he's no longer in the mall parking lot, now he's on a farm. Uh... And old man Peabody is the guy who tells him, take that, you mutated son of a bitch! <laughs> well, if he needs someone to play like crazy old guy, he's yeah, uh, exactly. He's well, okay, in your synopsis, you said senile, but that, like the they made it seem like he was just like not even there like i think he, they used the word though i think they used they? the word uh in, at one point where they were dismissing him where he's just a senile old man that part <gasps> of the movie made no sense to me like they okay like i was clocking it because i was just like 25 minutes in i just feel like when's the movie gonna start Oh, <laughs> because it was just like okay, this entire movie is just a series of coincidences. That's that's what <laughs> yeah. I kind of like reasoned it, it, it to be. It's just like a lot of like non sequiturs and <laughs> just things that just don't connect or make sense. Because that whole scene at the beginning with the grandpa, they put so much focus on it, and it yeah. it doesn't mean anything. It's like nothing. Like I was trying to because I hadn't seen it for a while, and I was just like. Oh, they're going to like a mental hospital. Is like mm -hmm. the was it the guy who like killed the parents like an escapee like that? That would make sense. And it's just like no, it's just some rando who is like yeah, holding up yeah. a liquor store and then breaks down yeah. on the side of the street. So it's just like none of that needed to be in there. I guess you could argue it's like it's part of the charm of the movie. But me, I I'm would. just I'm just I'm just there getting impatient because I'm just like, when are we gonna get to like the like the Santa killing? Uh, I mean, look at people. me. I'm little eight year old Billy hearing you say bad things about Grandpa, going, "Oh, Zach, <laughs> Sherry, you shouldn't say that." Clutching it's your pearls. Naughty. I yeah. love that kid. Like, oh my god, the magic. And also, I I don't know. I there's something about the idealism <laughs> of the parents, the way they're just kind of smiling, gazing across you know the car yeah. <laughs> at each it's other like, while they're all mommy were you ever naughty as a child once maybe or once twice. or twice yeah <laughs> so cute i just think like oh my gosh i love this little warmth in the family i don't like the fact that she has his little brother ricky sitting as a baby like on her lap no in the car front. seat <laughs> yeah no it was another time you know <laughs> well i mean <laughs> we because that crossing. portion of, that portion of the movie takes place in 1971 uh, uh okay. Yeah, we'll, yeah. okay we'll talk about like the the time and age discrepancies because because you were just talking about like just like the cute little kid characters because my absolute favorite character in this movie i think her name was chrissy uh, oh, uh -huh. just like the one at the end and 
that was like trying to go towards the door to to let yes. Sani in, and Mother mm-hmm. Superior is just like, no, Chrissy, and she's just like, but Mother Superior, Sani causes. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, that's so, she's so sweet. I love her. Just so. And she so, bears a yeah. striking. She bears a striking resemblance in to uh, the little girl who plays Freddy's daughter in Freddy's Dead. To me, she's not. It's not the same actress, but she's like spit an image. But um, yeah. yeah, I love her too. But oh my gosh, there's so much more to love in this movie. She needed but, okay, to be so in the movie a... more. That was that was the, <laughs> the one thing. Just like she just showed up at the end, and I'm like, where was she the whole time? I think, but I think in order to like properly set up Billy as isolated and not necessarily connecting, like he yeah. doesn't ever really dissemble and connect with the community. He does mm-hmm. the best he can, but even at his best, like during that wonderful. Uh, uh, montage <laughs> oh <my laughs> with gosh. the warm side of the door. That was when I knew I absolutely loved this movie. For okay. a while ago and prior to that, I was like, this is just really sad. I, this do you is... have the lyrics to that song? Because I was like, I no. <laughs> cause just because this was so early, like I, I was busy setting up something else. I, I wanted to get them just so I can read them on here. <laughs> but this is the most ridiculous song oh, yeah. ever like th- this whole segment it just reminded me of like a full house opener mm-hmm, uh like the totally. opening credit <laughs> just, that gets like... spoiled by the presence of santa claus like otherwise it would be mm-hmm. a completely idealized kind of you know open yeah credits below like a shrug and a nod yeah. and a smile and a wink and everything yeah um but i i mean even just the fact i love the fact that he's in there with uh uh andy the the bad co-worker um, who the, the gal the goofus to Billy eighteen year old Billy's gallant and he's like offering him alcohol like on his lunch break during the day and Billy's like nah man and holds up like a carton of milk and I'm like oh my god <laughs> maybe Billy's gonna be all right after all you know <laughs> but um, um, but I mean everything about what what happens prior to that. Um, is a lot of stuff that actually I, I'm kind of surprised and I think other people who are kind of similar with things that turn me off in movies might be surprised that I love this movie as much mm-hmm. as I do because number one of its, uh, shall we say, frank <laughs> or blunt mm-hmm. or explicit violence against women, you know, uh, uh, at times. Not compared to Terrifier, but, um, you know, you have to witness two women in attempted assault situations where they both have their shirts ripped open and their their uh, breasts exposed mm-hmm. and um, that are, you know, seem to kind of like go above and beyond your typical slasher. I feel like Linnea Quigley's kill is actually kind of more sla- typical slashery and that's why it's a little bit more palatable. Also, who at this point, who hadn't seen Linnea Quigley topless, you know? But um, <laughs> but um, also, I mean, because also she was set up in a typical horror movie fashion. She was a girl, for, for some reason, uh, getting it on with her boyfriend on a pool table. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but the other two were, like, set up as, like, you know, um, these characters who are main character has a a tremendous affinity for because one is his mother and the other is the girl he's kind of got his eye on Mm -hmm. and um and also i guess like since since it wasn't just like slasher violence that was perpetrated against these women it was like sexual violence but um or attempted sexual violence i think that's another thing that makes it a little bit more palatable for me though too is the fact that no one achieves any kind of uh we're not, violation we're not to completion in or anything. Rob Zombie remake yeah. Halloween territory here, where it's just like it's, it, <laughs> we're gonna yeah. go five minutes before like anyone like gets up and does anything about it. <laughs> and also, I but I mean, I, so I think that's probably one of the saving graces for me. But I mean, it is yeah. it, it is. Uh, you, you just I, I don't, I'm not. Yeah, go well, ahead. I was gonna go say ahead, go you ahead. just made me realize because because like because this, this movie is so random just because it's just like it's just like a, a series of coincidences. Yeah. <laughs> this literally could have been like the setup to any movie. <laughs> like it, if they wanted to do like a sexual assault story where it's just like all of a uh-huh. sudden like this, the, he you know he gets a job and at this job there's like a coworker who who commits this crime against another coworker who's interested in it. It could have been like a completely different movie if it wanted to go like the full house route and just like, oh, here's just like hijinks <laughs> going on to the store. It could have been anything. 
Um, mm -hmm. they, which is just why it's it's so jarring to me that it just like it took all that like craziness at the beginning with like going to see the senile uh, grandpa at the <laughs> at the mental <laughs> asylum uh, to get to where they needed to. You know, it, like there there were so many different paths they could have taken. So it's just it, I I can only imagine like whoever wrote this like what the mm -hmm. <laughs> like what that journey was like just writing that script of just because it just feels like. <laughs> Like, oh, now we're gonna go here um, uh -huh. at this at this like small little department store. Um, but now we're <laughs> now we're gonna go here, and and but we're gonna go back to the orphanage later because we want to have like a big show stopping conclusion there. Well, I want a big show stopping conclusion because I want to see that bitch get hers. I was so the first time I saw this movie, I've only mm. seen it somewhat recently too. I didn't grow up with it or anything like that. I think I saw it maybe yeah. within the last 5 years for the first time. And I remember watching uh everything the mother superior put uh uh Billy through. And it just made me hate her and hate her more. And I have my own, you know, uh, history with Catholicism and everything like that. I was raised in that institution, so I feel like I can speak freely without fear of uh, 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 reproach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and I was just kind of like, get her! You know, like I, I was fully on... Because that's another thing that I feel this movie does successfully, even as exploitative as it can be, or even as like, you know, kind of like, you know, low budget you know uh hack and slash the way it's kind of like shot you know like uh or edited or anything like that yeah um at, 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 i feel like at its core it's telling a story a sympathetic story about a poor boy into young man who uh just needed someone to care just needed somebody to go the extra mile and like be able to kind of like prevent any of the yeah. <laughs> happenstance circumstantial like uh uh mishaps that he had to kind of like load the well, sleigh as it were I guess he, of him going into his he night, had that you know? with sister whatever her name was um <laughs> <laughs> sister margaret uh, sure yeah. um who is like just completely ineffectual like just like She's like the one that shows up too late. She's almost like the Dr. Loomis of like the Billy character. Yeah. <laughs> except except like not like <laughs> she hasn't like resigned. The one who to, knows his story him. though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we needed more of her for sure. Cause I was just like, when she showed up, I was just like, oh, she's in this movie for more. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't get anything done at all. I think like. I mean, I, yeah. No. Go with your think. No. <laughs> Go well, on with your thing. thing. I think her. I, I think her presence w w there was to like show that like it. I think if she weren't there, the world would have seemed like a much harsher place. Like it would have been like it would have made a much more cynical statement about like how people treat how the world treats people like Billy and everything like that. So the fact that she was there, at least there was kind of like some light shining on him a little bit. Mm. She's the one who got him the job at the department store. Little did she know they were going to make him be a Santa Claus. She didn't have the foresight to think like, by the way, he's got kind of a thing about Christmas. So maybe, mm. you know, lay off a little bit. Don't, don't integrate him into the, the holiday quite so much. He, he may, he, he may even need a few days off and, you know, don't let him play Santa, you know, <laughs> like, something like that. But how could she know? But, um, cause also I feel like, uh, from the beginning, like here you, you were, you were criticizing like the whole grandpa thing is random. What I love about it is for me, it just feels like a complete curveball because you know something is coming. Things are too idealistic up until that point. So the fact that all of a sudden it's just this strange old man who turns on this child, his grandchild, for no reason whatsoever, <laughs> and who and who also seems to be faking the the extent of his whatever his condition is. Um, unless this is part of it, like I just love that there's a huge question mark yeah. over everything that uh, that m motivates this man to traumatize this child yeah. the way well, he, he does. Yeah, but it's just like <laughs> like he's just really laser focused on on Billy because like as soon as the parents yeah. come back in, he's just like sets back into catatonia, um, and I just that yeah. entire sequence like what's f like funny about it to me really is like this was not a, a short drive. Like they were, they emphasized like <laughs> at the, and on the way over, just like, oh, are we going to be there? Just like, just a few more hours. They get there and literally they're just like, 
hey, dad. And then they're like, we need to speak to you in the office. And they're like, okay. They go in, they come back out and like, okay, well, we'll come visit you soon, dad. And it's just like, yeah, right. so you just drove like nine hours or whatever. <laughs> To see him Maybe for a just to minute. See how he was doing. They said he seemed worse than than you know the last yeah. time they saw him. So maybe they just wanted to check in, which I think is I something mean, a lot of people do actually. Yeah, the but like to ease their own guilt. But realistically, if I'm gonna <laughs> if if I've been sitting in a car for that long and I came to see someone, like even if I don't want to be there, I'm just gonna be like, okay, oh. well here we are. I'm gonna at least put in thirty minutes, maybe twenty. <laughs> <laughs> They're just in and out. They're in and out. <laughs> let's traumatize our child. Okay, honey. Yeah, we'll that's, maybe that's why he's pissed off. All right, let's go. That's why he's pissed off. It's just like the, the sins of the parents. He's just like, well, I can't do much Ooh. to them. But, you know, they you know, they think they can come here for like a millisecond uh, of a visit. I'm going to fuck their kid. Yeah. Um, it's but the very, thing is like they didn't. Actually, it's... Billy didn't need yes, him did. because the fucking. Yeah. The. The. Yeah, Robert uh, uh, was you know he he was the the uh, I don't want to say the nail in the coffin, but like certainly like the linchpin to to all of the yeah. the catalyst of everything that that really transpires. Like he is the first domino. Uh, the grandpa is just like I... a very strange uh, omen. <laughs> just like <laughs> well, he's a prophet. Because grandpa's. Really. The grandpa's like little traumatic episode that he that he uh, I- I- imbues or whatever he does with it, uh, yeah. that he acts out upon his grandchild mm-hmm. Billy is. I think Billy still could have you know recovered from that. Obviously, like you know the, the parents were speculating. They're like, do you think he really could? Like they could have pursued yeah. some kind of investigation and like gone through a series of tests, to, like you know, see is he faking or is he not? And everything like, that. They're, they're, like, and mm-hmm. then Billy, they could have been like, oh my gosh, Billy, we're so sorry. We never should have left you alone. You know, blah 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 blah. And there could have been healing. There could have been a lot of that. So I agree with you. The grandpa is not at fault. I He's mean... really just kind of like the first thing to get this little boy afraid of Santa, because otherwise, he. In fact, he actually may have like lessened the trauma a bit because the boy was prepared for Santa to be evil <laughs> when the, they pull that car over for the burglar Santa. Yeah. As opposed to, like, if he would have been excited about it and be like, Santa's by the side of the road, mom. And then all of a sudden you see Santa, like, killing your parents, like, Santa! You know, like, where is this coming from? At least he said him. So maybe the grandpa did him a favor. I don't know. But... <laughs> I, don't know, but, I love um, that you talk about like uh, trauma also... for these characters because I like watch this movie and I'm just like I don't see a semblance of like a real human character in anyone. I mean, I I mean they're obviously caricatures. Yeah. I can't argue that. But the thing is, caricatures with heart. Like I don't. This doesn't feel like a soulless movie to me. I no I, no not at all. I am I empathize far too deeply, or at least sympathize yeah. far too deeply. But empathy is probably on the table. I did with, love with, the with, uh, uh, like. Billy running out of the car with his little legs and hiding. And then just thinking, like, did the guy not see him? Like, he was, like, standing right there walking towards them. Right. And just, it's just like, what happened to that kid? You know? Like, I'm sure there was another kid there. Um, also, well, because that's another thing that gets me about that scene, though. Aside from just, like, the violence, particularly against the mother. The screaming baby. Dear God. Oh, oh my yeah. God! Like you wanna you wanna compound trauma, yeah. put a baby in it, and just have them scream cry, mm-hmm. absorbing all the chaos around them, but not being able to process it because they're just a little baby. Oh my God! I'm I was like that poor kid, that poor baby. When is he gonna get his movie? Little did I know, <laughs> there's a sequel. And yeah, yeah. doesn't he get but, like four <laughs> movies? Uh, there are five and a remake. If I'm if I'm remembering correctly. So is the remake total? Okay, is the how closely? Because I I remember no. like starting to watch the remake at one point and I and I never finished it. But it, so it doesn't follow this movie at all. No, because I was. It's, it's not even called Silent Night, Deadly Night. It's just called Silent yeah. Night, and it's it's basically its own thing. Because yeah. I was watching this and just thinking like, you know what? Like this actually could warrant a remake because it it is so, even for 1984 it feels so dated that it probably could have you know like. You know, why are they doing, like, Halloween, Friday the 13th, Black Christmas? Like, do something like Silent Night, Deadly Night. Like, that might be a good updated remake. So, 
I mean, they I, did. I mean, or they tried whatever. They, was, yeah, yeah, because I don't think that it wasn't theatrical. It was just like straight to uh, to DVD. Uh, yeah, maybe DVD. I don't know if Blu-ray would. Well, yeah, Blu-ray would have been out by then. But um, no, I wanted to. Okay, because <laughs> the the time discrepancies. Because how old is Billy in like the at the beginning? He's um, eight. Eight. And then he's eleven. And then he's eighteen. Okay, yeah, so, like, seven years pass between that, like, you know, him showing up as, like, the, the actor who plays him, like, proper. Robert right? Brian Wilson. Yeah, because, I because yeah. like, the, the brother, who's such an afterthought, oh, yeah. too. Because I was just, like, he's the same age. Was it even the same actor, maybe, who, like, played him in the, the, the 1974 and then 19... No, it was 10 years, because I remember, didn't it say 1974? Uh, during like the orphanage scenes. Uh, hold on, hold on, wait. 1971, 1974 at St. Mary's, yeah, yeah, and 1984 at Iris Toys. Oh my God, you're right. I didn't even. I wrote it down. I didn't yeah. even track it. <laughs> so you're you're probably not even wrong. Like that, it, you know, even if it was like eight years, like how? Because what was he like? Eighteen and he was supposed to be eighteen. Yeah. So they, yeah, didn't they didn't even. Didn't. They didn't even get their. <laughs> <laughs> like he should have been five in the opening. Maybe he was maybe five. He in, was, maybe, maybe I misread he, it. Okay, maybe he was five in the opening. Maybe he was eight in the the orphanage stuff. Orphanage. But the the brother. Oh, he that, is. He is at five. He is five in the opening. Okay, but, I got that but wrong. still, I'm like sorry. the brother in that ten year span does not age. Like, so like, I mean, like, is it the same actor? And even if not, it's just like maybe like the difference of like three years. Um, cause he's, well, okay. Cause he, he was a baby. He was an infant. So let's yeah. say generously like, well, he should be one, like 14 if that at least. Yeah. That. He yeah. should. Uh, yeah. He's 13, still 14, a little too yeah. boyish at the end of the movie, but yeah. I don't know. It, 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 that, that doesn't bother me. Oh, <laughs> I, by the time we get to that point in the movie, like I'm, there's so many other bells and whistles going off that I'm just kind of like <laughs> Christmas. Yeah. But, um, well, you know also, me I mean, I and say, my, and my, you know, <laughs> Continuity yes, yes, you and, and, and logic, you are the so. man who edited together the who killed who in that opening sequence and plotted it out exactly people, like the way yeah. you would <laughs> <laughs> But um, I I like what you did. Uh, but, <laughs> also, but I mean, another thing that I like that's kind of like set up early in this movie, and it's it's I I wouldn't say it's like necessarily paid off in droves like throughout the rest of the movie. But the uh, the first effect that really makes me kind of go like, wow, um, is the burglar Santa when he's in that convenience store shooting the cashier in the head. There's mm -hmm. a shot of like just the cashier laying there after the gunshot, the final gunshot is fired. Yeah. And you just see the wound appear in the cashier's forehead. And this is not CGI. This yeah. is before CGI. And you just see it like drip blood down his face. And I remember yeah. thinking, wow, okay, that's, that's, that's decent. Like that qualifies as like unsettling and making me think like wow this is violent you know and it looks real enough yeah. well so, the well the the scream factory set which I'm, I'm sure is the one you have like because that had two yeah. versions it had the regular theatrical yes. and then unrated i don't i didn't clock you know i wasn't that invested to see like what was added i just know that there's a lot of like the transfer looks pretty good for the most part but there's some scenes that are really mm. bad they're really choppy and i just assumed uh -huh. those were the the unrated or like the you know the extended version. All, you scenes. can always tell the unrated ones because they're also they're they're obviously a video transfer like they were pulled from a video assist I guess yeah. and they were all and they're all still you know they look largely pixelated and very very dark compared mm -hmm. to I think yeah, I I agree with you I think the rest of the transfer is very bright I do have to say I don't think the 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 uncut version. Mm -hmm really lends all that much more there's there's like a handful of things that we'll, we'll get to but ultimately i feel like you could watch the theatrical cut and be ultimately satisfied yeah. um by 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 i mean if you are going to be satisfied by a movie like this like me um but it's um also the, the so the introduction of the mother superior though i remember from the beginning i didn't i didn't recognize her right away but i remember um, being kind of captivated by her cadence, obviously. That's why I read the uh, premise the way I did. But I also was kind of taken by her performance because she wrote, she 
she rung of like Priscilla Pointer in Another Nightmare on Elm Street uh, reference in Dream Warriors as the the woman who we all hate because she's putting our Dream Warriors at risk and thinking she's you know being all self righteous and telling the people who are trying to help the kids I'm sorry I think you I guess I'm but I'm you've done this to yourself you know and like. Oh, didn't realize while she was playing the role what a bad guy she was until fans started telling her, like, we hated you in that movie. You were awful. She's like, I thought it was a good guy. I think <laughs> <laughs> I think the actress playing uh, Mother Superior, um, uh, Lillian Chauvin, Chauvin, or Chauvin, I don't know how to say her name, Lillian, um, I think she knew she was playing a... Uh, 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 a hard-boiled character yeah. at best. But the thing that I love is that I do honestly believe while I'm watching her, there were times where she locks eyes with Billy, particularly as a little boy, and where you can see she's seeing good in him. It's not like she's told herself he's a demon child, but <laughs> it's, but you can also see that she's completely drunk on power and completely misguided in her attempts to do things that she believes are right but that are yeah. ultimately harming the kid and sister margaret is in is not in a position of power she's kind of like you know making the choice over and over again to submit to mother superior which i mean is very that's very true to the catholic church as far as mm. my understanding the way it works it's there isn't justice doesn't always you know win out in the end and that, that that's another thing i maybe it's just my bleak christmas outlook <laughs> because i am not i'm not a big christmas person i like it it's fine mm. you know there's things about it i like but i also find a lot of pressure i find a lot of I've lost a lot of family members around the holidays. And I, so there's a lot of, you know, kind of trauma waiting to be unwrapped sometimes as well as the gifts that, you know, yeah. you're getting. Or that I think it's just because, to give. because, yeah, there is so much pressure and expectation put on the holidays that it, there is always like a letdown that uh, I, I think more often than not, people walk out of the season just, just being completely stressed and just like, yeah, that was not, you know, it, 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 it doesn't live up to the hype. Fortunately, you have to like learn how to redefine it for yourself. Yeah, yeah, like I don't like my family uh, is well, spoiler alert Jewish, so we never celebrated Christmas. Like I, yeah. I think my like I experienced that trauma early on because it's like all my friends at school, uh, you know, like got to right. you know get the the gifts and stuff, and like we had Hanukkah and all that, but like. It was never, you know, I would, I would like ask my mom and just be like, oh, can I get that for Hanukkah? And just like, we don't do that. <laughs> just like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, oh, God. Um, oh, heartbreak. But it's fine. Yeah, like, you know, we, we had family members that like, you know, like I would, I would get yeah. small gifts and that. But I never would, you know, you see things in the movies and, you know, like everyone would anyway. And just like kind of like this idealized Christmas so I just like always assume like, well, I guess I'm never gonna have that. And I just, from a very early age, I was just very cynical towards Christmas. Uh, and you're just mm. like, yeah, I don't care about it. And I've basically like that has manifested into like where I am now or just like, uh, it's it's just a, a like a big inconvenience really. Cause it's like, I got shit I gotta do. And for the stores to be closed, <laughs> For several days or you know just like closed early closed completely on christmas yeah. it's just like why do i have to stop my life for everyone else yes that's my that's right. that's my grinch attitude towards it so i just like as far as i'm concerned <laughs> there's like a span of time from like probably around like now like when this this episode's released you know like or you know a few days later like the 22nd 23rd until like pretty much like the into the first week of January, maybe like January 2nd, January 3rd, where I feel like the world just mm -hmm. stops turning. It's just like nobody is doing anything. Nothing is happening. And I get so restless and antsy. I'm just like, let's get on with it. You know, we, we got places we need to be, <laughs> stuff to do. Everyone, come on, no. get back to work. That's I understand <laughs> completely. No, and in recent years, I've, because I mean, I, I had those idealized kind of like kid holiday Christmases where, you know, because my parents weren't rich, but they were 
we were comfortable yeah. and they could get me things that they knew I wanted. And I grew up in the 80s, like the age of consumerism for children. You know, like I got the Masters of the Universe, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you know, the next year. Or, the, or I was obsessed with Smurfs. I was obsessed with, God, what else? Thundercats. Like there was always something for me to be obsessed with that I would be like, I need you know, at least the first run of action figures for this particular toy line. That's what's my Christmas list is this year. And then they yeah. just wash me in it. And I'd just be like, thank you. And I'd, those were my toys for the rest of the year What is you your, know, that I played with. What is your ideal, like, 80s child you gift? Like, what would be the best thing to for you to get? Um, it was probably the year I got uh, my first run of... I mentioned it first, the Masters yeah. of the Universe, that Castle Grayskull. Oh my God! I watched Netflix has that documentary uh, uh, about I like the toys that, that made yeah. us. Yeah, and the episode devoted to Masters of the Universe, I've watched more than once yeah. because something about even just seeing the toys <laughs> um, in their original form, like their the, the original format that they that they <laughs> presented them in and everything, something about it is ju it just it just reassures me. It's like it's kind of it does the same thing to me that like. I don't really like McDonald's anymore, but I can smell a Happy Meal mm -hmm. and be like, oh, yeah, you know, seeing a Master of the Universe action figure is the same thing. Yeah. It's like just the whiff of a Happy Meal just takes me back. goes like, oh, yeah, when pl simple pleasures. When the toys but used to be fun. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I don't, I don't pay attention to what the toys are nowadays, but I, I remember like there was a time where just like the, there was like a collectability to uh -huh, uh, like a mcdonald's totally. toy like there's just like mm -hmm. series and they had like other things they had like the plates i remember like they were like big into like disney stuff like i remember they had the hercules yes. plates when those came out uh, uh -huh. in the 90s and i got like all of those and for the longest time that was like my like you know first time moving out of uh the parents and living on my own that was like uh, my <laughs> my uh plateware <laughs> just like hercules <laughs> plates nice. and i know they because they had like <laughs> even like the batman forever um they had like i remember they had like the the mugs like the glass mugs but my favorite was like the yeah, batman I, returns I, I, and i feel we can talk about uh, batman returns because we always talk about batman returns but that is a christmas yes, movie and it might be my favorite christmas movie but um and it's a little uh, horror it's like a, a little horror but those dark, toys, dark christmas yeah those toys the little the little cars or whatever that they had for that movie the cars i yeah. loved those i had them the little for cat woman car with the tail, the tail that would wag when you yes yeah oh my gosh andre if you <laughs> You could like find images of these toys and put them <laughs> on here so people can see the, what the, we're talking about. The those. penguin with his little spinning umbrella in the front that would yes. move when he when he drove around. Yeah, I remember. It was those like two. the I big duck. Yeah. I think yeah, the, um, and I think there's only four of them. But I was just like, I love the shit out of those, and it, I yeah. probably didn't have them for very long. Like they either like broke or got missing or whatever but it right. felt like an eternity that i had them i would bring them to school Me too. and i would play with them at recess and just like this is this is all i need you know <laughs> <laughs> was there a toy that like got away for you like if you if you were allowed to like get kind of like uh, not christmas presents but like at least in the same vein like oh everybody's like getting you know what they want this year i know exactly what i want is there kind of a toy you were deprived of as a kid if I was deprived of something, um, probably a lot of things. Um, <laughs> oh no! For, I mean, there there was a lot, but also because like there were things that I wanted to play with. That I mean, obviously, like at the you know different times um, that um, you know I wasn't allowed to because it might have been too. Um, mm. Gay. <laughs> Just oh, okay. Like okay. Gotcha. Um, so I know there was like a lot of like maybe. Those, uh, like the little like kitchen things, or like any of like the domestic like things like that. I remember, I, I, I'm pretty sure the I wanted like, food? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure like I want, I mean, that was probably more so practicality, not so much just like I think he's gay, but like, just, <laughs> just like, how are you gonna make like food and stuff? You know, like we have a kitchen at home, you know, you don't need to have this shit. I, there was like the creepy crawlies, I might have gotten that though. I can't remember. Do you okay. remember the thing that you you'd like make the the molds of the Oh the stuff? my gosh. Yeah, I do remember yeah. that. I think I had I don't think that. I ever got them. I think I had okay. that. But I, I think I mostly like the deprived things. Cause there was like I maybe like Stretch Armstrong. I know I had like one of them. Like I, I got the villain 
or yeah, something. But there, there were like, there's so many. There, you know, like you're a yeah. kid at a candy store. You go in and you you see a commercial for something. You go into Toys R Us or you just walk through anywhere and just like I have to have that. I have to have that. I was never yeah. like I didn't get into video games like that. Kind of like overtook everything. Like maybe more so in the in the mid 90s or whenever the n64 came out. oh okay um but sure. yeah i was i was more about like like physical toys like before that and yeah i think the the only ones that i can recall are like anything that was like feminine or like frilly or, or shit like that that um and it was more so it wasn't like my mom this was more so my stepdad uh uh-huh. good riddance anyway but like that i you know I, I couldn't get any of that or like if i did have things like that i know i had a lot of like disney stuff um and there were like mm. disney princesses because like who doesn't love like disney princesses especially oh, if you're like yeah. a gay child um yeah. the, the disney princesses are like those are like if there's like a hierarchy of your toys you know we're in like toy story now and it's like buzz and woody like the disney princesses <laughs> were at the top of the rung and every other toy uh, bowed down to them and I know uh, I had some uh, of just like little like actiony figures I guess of like Disney princesses mm-hmm. and I was kind of like uh-huh. forced to get rid of them um, we'll say oh, geez we're no. unpacking a lot here um, but no. yeah I was, <laughs> it was like I was given a dis- like a dis- decision it's just like do you want to keep these or do you not because like if you hold on to these it's gonna like you're gonna turn out like you know they didn't like say anything specific but just like it's just like you're not gonna have any friends or you know something like that i'm just like oh god okay yeah let me get rid of that shit um oh my gosh but i turned out okay right yeah i think yeah you can buy whatever you want (laughs) (laughs) we need a judy greer doll stat but well um... (laughs) i I think I, i i don't know if i told you this off pod or maybe it was on the pod but because when uh i went to disney world uh mm-hmm. with my mom i think i was like eight eight years old or whatever and i was like huge into the wizard of oz at that time and we went into the shop and they had these music boxes or they're almost like i don't know mm-hmm. if they're music or like juke boxes or something the th- oh, like a right. thing would uh-huh. pop out like and it was like all the characters yeah. of wizard of oz and i was just like i want a glinda because like yeah. of course because it's pink and frilly <laughs> and just, which is not me at all now like i don't I know want... <laughs> um and all they had was the witch which i mean mm. me now i've been like give me the witch i want the witch <laughs> but i i remember like going into the store and i was like eight years old and my mom's like all they have is the witch like we can get that or we can like go somewhere else and get something else and i i full on like broke down and cried because this thing terrified me but also like mm. i set my expectations too high <laughs> and <laughs> and it made oh me, I, I got really sad and i and like looking back on it now i can just laugh but at, at the time yeah. that was that was like my my trauma but like gifts are important you know like as a child oh totally what, yeah, did, what I, was I, it's one of those things um, there's one thing that um, Jimmy Kimmel does. I don't know if he still does it every year, but for a while he was like trending on the internet with like having parents tell their children the day after Halloween, the morning of Hall- after Halloween, mm-hmm. um, that they ate all their Christmas candy. Oh, not Christmas, Halloween candy. I can't think. It's too early. They ate all their trick-or-treating candy, you know, from yeah. the night before. And you just, re- you know, film the kid and the kid like has I a breakdown that. and yeah. cries and everything like that. And people laugh. And I didn't laugh. I never did laugh. I was actually really kind of upset by it because I thought, when you're a kid, your ownership is so... (laughs) Your ownership window is so narrow. Like, basically, the only things that are yours are the toys you get on your birthday and any holidays Mm -hmm. where, you know, you you get gifts. And... um, and your Halloween candy, like that's basically all you own. Maybe your school supplies, but I don't. And you know, maybe that means something to you, especially if you're like an academic student, like I wasn't. But um, oh, really? I, but I, I, I'm. I, there's very little other things that feel like yours. I mean, yeah. even especially if you're a kid who has to like share our bedroom. I think a, mo- like a more responsible thing. I mean, I know that was just for jokes, but I, I could just see like as a yeah. parent, like if you're taking your kid trick or treating or something, you just be like, well, here's my fee and take like ten <laughs> percent. <10%. laughs> of the candy <laughs> or just like even say even bartering. just say to them like you know what you have to give me since i 
spent my time doing this because it's a, it imparts a good lesson just to know that like there you know not 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 everything is a hundred percent there are you know fees that you have to pay for services and stuff so i think that would be a good way to like <laughs> teach it oh my god i would be such a i don't want to say like i'd be a good parent but i would be a very practical parent and i think i, I think that my child would probably turn out like really successful <laughs> to toot my own horn, they would like probably hate once me. They learn, but, once, but once they, they would, learn but, that love is conditional, <laughs> they they would hate me. I mean, they, like it would it would be rough goings, but they would they would thank me. I would be on my deathbed, and they'd be like, "You were right, you know, you you are the mother superior." Yeah. <laughs> no, I see mother superior like she she was giving me more like nurse ratchet. Uh, vibes. Totally, totally. Um, like I saw, yeah, I, like I it may agree. as well have been like the, the same kind of character, but uh, yeah, that's what we needed. But at like the a end. Louise just, like, Fletcher, just, like, little like Billy, <laughs> like just him choking a, her, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or just Billy like throwing no, a thing not... through the window and just like running away in the in the distance. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, oh, but see, just to address, also just to like tie it in, like we're already back in the movie, but just to tie it in, like everything we've been discussing as far as toys. Yeah. My, I, I, to give you a rough idea of like what heaven for me as a kid would be, I would have loved Ira's toys in this movie because even yeah. though it looks kind of like you know pick and savey, big lots, just kind of like you know not not the greatest place, like you know where you're kind of like maybe gonna get bargain stuff and everything like that in its own aesthetic. Like then you start looking at the actual things on the shelves. And there's, like, full-on, like, ultra Mr. Potato Head. There's a Jabba the Hut with, I believe, a prisoner Leia, slave Leia, you know, like, below, there below her. There were Muppets. There were Smurfs. There was Play-Doh. There was Snoopy. There was Garfield. Like, okay, ringing all the right bells for me, particularly circa, you know, mid the 1980s. Yeah. Oh, I, I would have been so happy there. I would have wanted probably a little bit of everything. Um, but um, I also feel like... Billy's trigger uh, back into everything determined my decision whether whether I was on board with this movie or not because uh, watching him, and it happens even longer, it's even more extended in the uncut version, mm -hmm. doesn't need to be, but just watching like his, his, his trauma, Jamie Lee Curtis's favorite <laughs> word, <laughs> revisit him. <laughs> When he's watching fucking Andy, you know, just like uh, attempting to assault uh, or full on assaulting uh, Pamela and everything in the back and him just sitting there just shuddering, like immobilized by everything. Like, I mean, this, this is a really tall order. And even though it is, it, it, it's definitely got its foot in the exploitative pool. The other foot, I feel, is in something that's kind of like justifiably cinematic that I, that because I'm not, I'm not laughing at anything. I am connected with it. I am thinking, oh, Billy, no, no 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 oh shit i know what's coming now because i know what movie i'm watching yeah. but um i i really I, like adore for what it's worth like robert mm -hmm. brian wilson's performance and maybe part of it is being blinded by his beauty because i think he is immensely attractive but <laughs> he's like but the all-american like yeah. quarterback Beef fed, like, milk like, fed yeah yeah just like you know he holds that that carton of milk like you know it was like an appendage for him like it may as well just be fused <laughs> to his hand if there is a pre uh, uh uh pre santa or pre christmas eve robert brian wilson as billy is 18 action figure yeah he should definitely have a carton of milk and uh probably uh i don't know just a, a some a, a accessory little child to just kind of like you know smile at and chuck on the on the chin and just give them <laughs> help them reach the toy they're now they're we're basically just the like montage that. of like the full house uh <laughs> i know the thing that gets me like really the most out that. of that is when he clocks out and then like proceed Ooh. just sees like oh this this binder or whatever is askew. Let me fix that. And then the yes. the owner just like happening Mr. to see Sims. it and just being like, yes. and yeah, or whatever he does, <laughs> <laughs> just approvingly nods his head and just like, what yeah. a good kid, you know. And okay, yeah. and, this, and that leads me to my next question because I mean I guess we can sum it all up in, in trauma, but yeah, it it just seemed like for. <laughs> At the start, he was going after, you know, people who were naughty, you know, yeah. quote unquote naughty of, uh, yeah. you know, the coworker 
and mm. then the, the the love interest because she you know s- had some harsh words uh after mm. after yeah the fact. but then like okay but why kill mr sims and the uh like the assistant manager whoever she was and there was like other other characters too that are just like well are they really like do they fall under the the criteria for you know what is considered naughty because i like that she was trying to get out of the store and it seemed like at that point he was more of just like you've seen too much i gotta i gotta right. get rid of you just logistics but yeah. al- uh, but also i mean at that point he is fully like unleashed like <clears throat> i don't think he i don't think he thought he was going to kill pamela the the love interest you know character um but when she started behaving naughty (laughs) um and also maybe it's maybe it's maybe it's like leftover resentment for for with mr sims for putting him in the santa suit kind of like i wouldn't be like this if it weren't for you and isn't mr sims the one who gives him the alcohol too you don't remember Um. yeah I mean, but, that um, looked like the worst, like, I've been to some shitty Christmas, oh God. like, staff parties when I, you know, I've yeah, worked right. in places with, with people. And I just, like, yeah. that just looks depressing. It's only the five of them. Uh, well, for, like, it started off with other cashiers we've never seen before, and then they yeah. just kind of disappeared. I yeah. don't know where they went. Well, this was the after party, I guess, but I just kind of, like... <laughs> just go home. Where does Billy live, even? Like, does he have, like, a... Like a a, a room <laughs> in we, town we, or something. Uh, like we never, we never yeah. see it, but I was just kind of like, yeah, just go home. You know, like, cause there's, you could, <laughs> you could say that all these characters like introduced him to this, but like, you know, like at the end of the day, like you have accountability. You can be yeah. like, you know what? I don't, I'm not comfortable doing this. Uh, or just like, I'm not comfortable being here right now. I don't even like any of the people here except for you. And it's just like, I think I'm going to go, you know, but he, but like, he's already he's... spiraling. He's never had a drink before. So that's not good. <laughs> yeah. He's already kind of, he's in, he starts they should have given re... him milk. That's another thing they totally should have, but, yeah. um, and not eggnog cause gross, but, oh. um, yeah, it's the oh, worst. No, um, yeah. If you like eggnog, I'm sorry, but it no. Oh, get the fuck send out me of your here. recipe. Yeah. <laughs> no, if you like it, send me the recipe. I'll try it, but uh, only only a small bit. And I'm just gonna <laughs> say, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I ain't touching that shit. <laughs> I I just recently tried some uh, some vegan uh, uh, oat milk uh, 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 oat milk <laughs> like eggnog, and I thought because yeah. I thought oh because actually silk nog isn't bad anyway. Okay, we're into a whole like, like, uh, but yeah. okay. So, no more nog. but also, I mean, uh, the the fact that Mister Sims also kind of like re 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 catapulted like all of those memories back, like because he seemed to be kind of okay. He was jealous and kind of regarding Pamela and Andy as they were making their way toward the back of the store. Um, but then Mister Sims came over and like reminded him of like his memories. He was like, "What are you today with your parents?" He's like, "They're dead." And then he's just gonna like, "Oh man." You know, <laughs> and so maybe that lack of sensitivity, um, maybe he's paying that back. And maybe um, when he's going after the, I don't even remember her name, the one who goes, Mr. Seams. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mrs. Randall, I think is her name. Mm-hmm. And he goes after Mrs. Randall. Um, I think it is also just kind of like a thing you've seen too much. But also by then he's just, you know, yeah. he's the, 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 fir- the dominoes have, I have love, been pushed. I love how you're like justifying like w- why yeah. I'm like allotting like reasons for why you should die at this point. It's I would I say do. like for her because like <laughs> she's like, she does the whole like... <laughs> so like you at the end of every uh, every podcast where it's just like, is it the one where but she goes up and she's just like, so we're going to have like, I got some bad news or whatever. And just like it proceeds to make him play the guessing game. It's just like uh, you have a certain employee that will that is sick or won't be able to do this. And he's just like, well, just get another one. And just like, no, you don't understand. It's just like, then just tell him. Stop playing this whole like guessing game, you know, just just. So right. she's guilty for anything. It's that. Okay, there you go. Yeah. See, but he wasn't. But, but Billy wasn't privy to that. Uh, he, but he could have been told off camera. <laughs> sure, whatever. I know you're the the queen of head cannons. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. The head cannon. Um, queen. Speaking of speaking of queens, I want to go into uh, Linnea Quigley as Denise, Denise, who I love. Denise, the queen Denise, of yeah. 
Yes, <laughs> the queen of toplessness in the eighties, and um, she was. I, I and she delivered in this one. I loved the fact that, in true kind of like. I, she can do things that are like hack that feel exploitative, but the fact that she's doing them and the fact that I don't, I know she doesn't do anything she doesn't want to do makes the fact that she <laughs> puts on only her jean cutoffs, but no bra or mm-hmm. top <laughs> to conceal her breasts when she needs to go let the cat in <laughs> for the night <laughs> because she hears the jingle bells and, you know, so she's got to go check it out. The fact that she opens the door you know, on a snowy night you know, basically completely naked except for some jean cutoffs and some underwear underneath. Yeah. Uh, they were like, no, full, no were they like Daisy Dukes? They were like Daisy yeah. Dukes, yeah. And um, and she's and they were skin tight too. Like they just like onto her when she. The eighties were not about comfort, you know. Uh no, jean, especially with jeans. No, yeah. it was about tight jeans and maybe like a baggy sweater and you put a belt on it. But um, <laughs> she, but um, I love the fact that she um. She she answers the door and then is kind of like surprised that like there's someone there mm-hmm. who like means her harm. Um, I, I guess it bespeaks kind of like the the innocence of the town mm. that they live in, which I don't think is it ever even indicated. I feel like somebody mentioned a city name at some point, but I, it went right over my head because I was having too much fun. Yeah. But um, well, what did the one thing I do like. Say? I don't remember. I'll have to look again. Ah, another reason to revisit it. Okay. But uh, <laughs> I really look forward to watching. I do watch. I don't watch a lot of things every Christmas because I feel like that's kind of, um, I don't know, caging. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's it feels like I'm being straightjacketed into the, enjoying the holidays. I'd much rather kind of like, you know, Squash enjoy what I enjoy. Accord, but yeah. Yeah. If but this watch, one is if you one that watch I find myself. This movie in the middle of June. Yeah, totally. But this is one that I return to with the holidays, much like Black Christmas and much like Batman Returns. I'm I'm a devotee of a dark Christmas movie, you know, um, that doesn't kind of like go, hey, everything's great. It's just kind of like, no, bad shit, bad shit happens on Christmas. But um, <laughs> yeah, but Denise's kill, I feel like the theatrical cut is more effective in this case as well not because i i mean i think that for what we can see of the 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 antlers that he's impaling her on and everything like going through her torso Mm -hmm. um like it's it's fine it looks it looks fine i'm sure in hd it would look even better um but the thing is it kind of takes away from the reveal when tommy comes back up and is like looking for her because in the theatrical cut we don't see her impaled on there it's all just implied we just kind of see her head and Mm -hmm. see him pushing and then when tommy comes up we see oh my gosh she's on the deer you know like and it's just so much more effective i find um so that's another case uh the other thing that i uh that kind of like i found a little problematic was um pamela's back to pamela's kill in the unedited version, there's a, a, a shot that was cut that won't probably won't make YouTube, where there's a one of her bare breasts as her torso is being cut into with a knife and sliced upward. With the box and, uh, cutter, something yeah. about that, like yeah, something about like yeah. Oh, there you go. Well, yeah, box, cut, box that cutter. That just made, that makes me uncomfortable because it's a box cutter. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's I mean, just I like that's cutter, too. But... Yeah. We all we all have that. I mean, like you know, yeah. Halloween five. Uh, every time I can't find my scissors, like I, I just think of, of like poor Rachel <laughs> and just like, is someone here? Where, do, who took my scissors? Um, any sort of, any sort of like apparati that can be found, uh, like in the workplace at home, like that's, that's too much. Like an ax, you know, I don't come across too many axes in my yeah. you know, daily yeah. routine that I'm just like. Okay, that looks fun, you know, but, and, and even antlers, like, you know, that, you know, because I don't have, uh, like, a, a deer head mounted on any wall right. in, in my place. So just like, you know, this is out of, this is outside of my element. Like, these are, these are things that are new territory for me. But a box cutter, I mean, like, yeah. I'm afraid to, like, slice my finger on that. I don't need to see, like, someone get yeah. gutted. No, I think it also has to do because even I don't even have that kind of aversion with knives. Maybe it, they're normalized enough in my daily practice that it's like. But I think it also has to do with the way I'm holding it because most often in slasher films, if someone's killing with a knife, I mean sometimes they'll hold it the way you ho- hold it when you chop vegetables or whatever. Yeah. But most of the time, you're holding it in a reverse fashion so you can stab down in a very yeah. kind of Norman Batesy you know fashion. But oh. um, the and even the presentation of the box cutter to the little girl, 
I, I worry about her because I'm seeing a, a, a an open box cutter because that's one thing with a box yeah. cutter, especially I worked in retail and I used to have, uh, have to open boxes all the time. One thing I was always sure of was before it goes in my pocket or before I hand it to somebody else, yeah. close it and then hand it over or put it back in mm-hmm. your pocket. And the fact well, I that think it's th- an open box cutter going to her and I'm just like, oh. I mean, I, ooh, I look ooh. at that more of just like, it, it's sort of the the theme of this movie that just like children are corruptible. And totally. <laughs> it's just like, the, they're basically in that moment of like handing it to her, we're getting another mm-hmm. spinoff. Like there, there might be like a Silent Night, Deadly Night, like sequel of of just like whatever <laughs> happened her? to that whatever happened to that little girl because she is like oh, that would have been great you know it's just like almost like timelines of different like silent night deadly night uh children who <laughs> who go evil because of trauma <laughs> all the kids in the orphanage there could be a movie for yeah. every one of those kids there's in the so I, it's just so funny that like because you just talk about jamie lee curtis's favorite word and using trauma because yeah. like halloween and laurie strode is not the first franchise that I think of when I hear trauma because they're, and we've talked about this many times of just like, like Andy in, in child's play. There are so yeah. many more uh, franchises that are more well suited to, to that theme than, than yeah. something like Halloween. And and this is a, a prime example of just like, it just shows like, cause I, I feel like not like trauma is one thing, but like childhood trauma, that's, that's like a whole other level of shit. Uh-huh. Um, so that yeah, that's... and franchises franchises that handle the trauma yeah. over multiple projects. But I mean, uh, yeah, but they concisely. they were like <laughs> Halloween, Blumhouse. They were so focused on you know making it anything uh, other than like, well, he kills his family. <laughs> you know, they, it's it's a blood thing. You know, it's it, it's that that Jeez. you know, it's like, well, let's just make it about trauma. But um, the and other Habra. Habra, Habra being passed. <laughs> the trauma, one, from the Michael trauma Myers. is now being passed. <laughs> the trauma, yeah, from, not the horror. From the tra- tra- from Corey into Lori, Corey <laughs> into Lori, <laughs> and then into Lori to Corey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Where are we from? <laughs> the <laughs> I don't know. Not Brooklyn anymore. <laughs> yeah, it feels kind yeah. of Bostonian, yeah. maybe, but I don't want to insult. I don't know. You know I don't know the citizens of Boston. Anyway, who knows? But um, I was gonna say uh, Tommy. Uh, you know, speaking of like Halloween, Tommy, aka um, Barry Sims, uh, Barry yeah. kicks ass. Um, his death too, because he's just thrown out the window. But I was kind of. Uh, getting a flashback to Suspiria that we just did a few weeks ago because he's got, mm. like, the shards, like, the huge shards in his yeah. face. I think there's one in his torso or, you know, maybe it was yeah. the, the pelvic All region. Over, yeah. I, I don't remember. Yeah, just, like, big shards of glass. I'm like, okay, that was that was neat. I like that. I can... Yeah. That's, that's the kind of, like, death um, that's more digestible to me <laughs> than, like, a box <laughs> okay. cutter. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but the, uh, the 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 next sequence we find ourselves in, I believe, is the uh, the dad dressed as the Santa uh, crawling up into his daughter's room, which I still can't really wrap my head around because the mother looks just as shocked that he's there as <laughs> as the police do. But it, yeah. I can't tell if she's reacting to shock that just the police broke into her house yeah. and ran up and, you know, now have traumatized yeah. her child. Or if she's like, you said you were going to get milk. Like, I I, I don't know. I, <laughs> it's That's a it, weird... Wh- I mean, that probably could have been cut out of the movie. And I forgot about it until I thought you were going to segue into the, uh, the tobogganing. Uh, bit. Oh, uh, but yeah, like that because that it, it was almost like a, a mishmash of like it's Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy. Like he's you know putting presents under her yeah. pillow. Like that's not how it works. Um, no, it's not. I think that was more makes me. I what I got from that is there was more so just setting up the incompetence of the police in this the cops, movie. Yeah, um, which I'm fine with. Of of like anything, so I don't know. Yeah, I, I completely forgot about that scene. The only thing I really like about it is for the first time, I think, that I've ever seen in a movie of that era or Mm -hmm. any prior, there's a parent dressed as Santa. And when the child in a brightly lit room sees them, they recognize that it's their parent. Yeah. I hate, like, you you mentioned Full House. And I mean, even, you know, Friends did it with the Holiday Armadillo and everything like that. But just like, I mean, shows like that where, like, 
all a parent would have to do, or any kind of family member you see every day, could be Uncle Jesse, Uncle Joey, doesn't matter who it is, could like dress up as Santa and just make Santa Claus. And they're talking in their own voice. They're not doing anything. They didn't do anything to their face, no makeup or anything like that, not even maybe glasses to like hide. And you're just kind of like, oh my gosh, I met Santa. It's like, no, you didn't. And you would know that as a kid. I fucking hate this. So I like yeah. the fact that the first thing she do th does when she sees her father dressed as Santa is go, daddy. Yeah. So anyway. Another traumatized <laughs> or, child. daddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, okay. What's the song? The, the warm side of the door. The warm side of the door. Yeah. yeah. Like we need to take that song and just like replace it on like other like sitcoms like like a Full House or a Friends and just see how it it matches with the absolutely like the opening credits of, of just like the cast or take opening credits theme songs and put them over the Warm Side of the Door montage yeah. and just see like Robert Brian Wilson going everywhere you look I got milk you know, I yeah. don't know. <laughs> but or maybe um, it's just like the this... Seinfeld song <laughs> that would be interesting <laughs> oh my god bow, 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 just every bow. transitional moment every transitional moment in the movie should have a bow, bow, bow. <laughs> yeah that would be great <laughs> I want this now. I want to see this. Somebody yeah. do this on YouTube. Oh my God! Let make it a, a holiday present for your friends Zach Cherry and Ed to truth. But um, then we move to onto the sled bullies, mm -hmm. as I dub them. I just wonder what kind of loser <laughs> beats up someone to steal their fucking sled and then just go woo, you know, like down the hill. It's like, dude. I think that's a truly shitty person, which makes me glad that they die. Yeah. Because all you had to do was, like, wait your turn. Just show up and be like, hey, you guys sledding? Yeah. Can we join? We don't have any sleds, though. Yeah, man, I'll just go down and then you can do it. And You can actually have, like, you know, like a bonding thing. But no. you got to be mean. I don't like it. And it's on Christmas Eve, too. Yeah. That You know what? I think I'm, I think they were justified in being killed. Because I that's love a that thing to do on christmas eve i love that you say that because that just like reminds me this is something that's so true to life is like whenever there is a tragedy or something mm -hmm. that that it befalls uh, a, a group or a, a community or just, you know even a person on christmas or around christmas the first thing that that comes to like people's like minds or just like what they have to say it's just like Oh, and on Christmas, it's just like, <laughs> who gives a shit when it happened? It it's happened. True. Like, focus on the actual, like, <laughs> bad not part on of it. Christmas. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, like I, I remember just like even like in school, there were, there were like some students where like something would happen and be like, oh, like the worst part of it all is that it happened on Christmas. I'm like, no, the worst part of it is that it happened. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> who cares when? Like, Oh, you're reminding me, like the first time I saw the movie and I saw, I'm going to keep going back to fucking Mrs. Randall with her, <laughs> Mr. Sam's. I love that. That's like my favorite thing. But the fact, she doesn't, I, she, she could have done it for another 20 minutes as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> because what I really wanted to happen, and I was hoping the movie would satisfy that sometimes you get an appetite whetted for something. Yeah. I wanted, because she kept calling out his name, <laughs> what are you doing back here, Mr. Sam's? Once she discovered him, I wanted there to be that, <gasps> Mr. Sims, <laughs> and then it would have been followed by a not on Christmas. <laughs> it's because the tragedy is not just that it happened, yeah. but that it happened, happened on, on Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree with you. That's that's. I'm gonna carry that for the rest of my days. Now, I don't think yeah. I ever really articulated it to myself. Yeah. Before. Well, you need you need someone think... like me, just a, a Christmas grump. Yeah. <laughs> to yes. point that out you and your and all your grinchy cheeriness yeah. but um the but um the uh the kill i think though worked a little bit better on cut this is one of the only ones where i kind of appreciated because it just cleared up the sequence of like what happens with him like cutting the head off and everything it's like two extra shots but it just flows a little better yeah um also, you mentioned earlier about like kind of like the exposition of the ineptitude on the part of the cops uh, being established really early, uh, or at least you know early enough with the uh, Santa and Santa and his daughter thing, um, I like the fact that the cop. It doesn't end there. I like the fact that a cop behaves recklessly in this movie and actually gets punished for it because it feels too rare for me. Mm -hmm. And um, 
And also because it is reckless, because here you see the back of someone dressed up as Santa <laughs> when we're back at the orphanage. Mm-hmm. And you shoot a man in the back, not once, not twice, but thrice times, <laughs> and on Christmas, um, in front of children, mm-hmm. when really, I, there's a lot of things I think you could have done. I mean, even if you were going to open fire on him, shooting him in the back three times, like you could have taken it, shot him in the leg, yeah. make him go all kind of like limp and fall and everything like that, and then ask some questions. Well, I guess that their excuse look at his face. was because like, they're like, well, we shouted out to him, but he didn't respond, and they're like, well, father, whatever he was is dead. Father yeah. O'Brien, yeah. yes, <laughs> he's deaf. And this is the other thing. I was just kind of like, so was he going to sign with the kids? Like, I wonder. Like, I, like it, I think it it's to kind of compound yeah. the, the the tragedy of it and to kind of like compound the reason why. I don't know why it wasn't hear, that like... was happening outside and not inside. You know, it just it just seems right? like a more controlled <laughs> environment might have been better for to have with Santa. I mean, they had it earlier in the movie when when little eight year old Billy. Dex, uh, <laughs> yes. the, the the guy playing Santa. What does he say? He's just like, ah, something's like really wrong with that kid. Or, oh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Like yeah. this freaking kid. What was it? Or whatever. What present yeah. did, did Billy get? Because wasn't that another trigger for him? It, and, um, the Wait, the present that he got when he was at the orphanage when he was a little boy? Yeah. I don't remember. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look. Okay. <laughs> I don't think it was, I think I think it was that, just the fact that he had to sit on Santa's lap. That's what he didn't want, and that's why you punched I'm, him. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check. So you keep uh, Oh, no, him. because, yeah, because Mother Superior gave him, told him, now you can go uh, open your Christmas present, William. And he goes over, mm-hmm. and he grabs his present from under the tree, I believe, and he sits down, he starts opening it, and that's while Sister Margaret and Mother Superior are discussing how how well he is and sister margaret's almost congratulating mother superior on like the fact that he seems so well now but says he always does well he always improves after christmas Mm -hmm. so and she's like you will notice a significant change in him now it's like well he always gets better after the holidays but um Mm -hmm. it's like no it's not over today he will sit on the lap of santa claus and he will behave and you will (laughs) see that my methods work and it's like fuck you bitch because i think that was it that's what triggered him was I think he was fine with the gift. I don't know. What are you, are you looking? Are you seeing? I'm trying to find it. Yeah. Okay. Um, while you're doing that, um, yeah. No, it was just it was just something I remarked on. The only time I ever saw, not even a deaf Santa Claus, Santa Claus, but what, what a Santa Claus signing was in that Richard Attenborough Miracle on 34th Street that they made, where they had the little girl who was deaf, and she was talking to him in sign language, and he answered her back, and that made. The little girl, little Matilda, whatever her name is, you know, <laughs> little Mrs. Doubtfire, Mar- that, Mara Wilson, that girl, yeah. Mara Wilson, that's her name. I haven't thought about her in ages, but um, I was just thinking about her at the end of Mrs. Doubtfire. Yes, that. Uh, <laughs> when he says uh, they're going to hang out together. Yeah, just so, just to follow up on that. Yeah, there. I, I don't yeah. think it actually reveals what his his gift was. But had it been something uh triggering that that might have been like a good sway for uh a certain cherry picker that w- that we'll eventually get to but uh <laughs> but continue oh so anyway that's the only time i've ever seen santa doing like sign language and it just made me wonder like well what would that would have been like it, like yeah. do all the children at the orphanage like do they practice asl or something or can he read lips and can he speak like well enough like i don't know i just had all these questions i just want to see how that scene would have played out if father o'brien would have survived but also, okay. Or even then, been in the movie before. Yeah, yeah. If he had been in the movie before, it would have been cool. But see, then, again, I would have been pissed because I would have been like, why are they sending someone who the kids know, <laughs> you know, in to like, you know, especially like if he's signing, you yeah. know, and stuff, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, you signed just like Father, o- Father O'Brien, <laughs> you know, and then there'd be the horrible, more trauma, trauma all around. Yeah. But um, anyway, speaking of that, what follows, I love that the children are all just basically inside now <laughs> because there's a chalk outline in the snow yeah. <laughs> in the front yard <laughs> and the the cop the cop who committed the murder is still working he's still on the clock and still allowed to pursue billy i guess they were short staffed cuz it's christmas and he mm-hmm. um he uh <laughs> they should be double staffed of all the things that happen right? on christmas <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> like, okay, so he's doing a perimeter, basically, while mm-hmm. Mother Superior is sitting there and she's telling the children. <laughs> I wrote down, it's a section of what she says. She says a lot, but she's just like, mm-hmm. stop that moping. We're going to sing. <laughs> like, stop that moping after the brutal murder you saw of a priest who, you know, has come dressed as Santa Claus. We're going to sing now. We're going to push it way down deep into the pit of our stomach. And we're going to sing car- Christmas carols. I've even got my little, I forget what she calls it, like Harmonica whatever it is to play. play. Or whistle. Yeah, but I mean, it's it, it's something. It's like it's to like give the, the it may, everybody singing in the same key. Yeah. So stupid. <laughs> She's such a bitch. Anyway, um... And then uh, the only the only other criticism I think I have in the movie is just the cop death. Um, even though I'm glad that you know I feel like the character deserves what uh, what's coming to him because he is naughty. He is the naughtiest of all the victims. I feel, <laughs> but um, he. Uh, uh, I just feel like that's one point where the filmmaking suffers a bit because there's no tension. He's like running around what a cellar. Or a shed, or or yeah. a boiler room. I don't know what the fuck it is. No, I agree. Outside the I, orphanage. Yeah, and I that, I always check out at that point. It's like three minutes too long. I think that that was something where it seemed like the, the tonal shift, or just like you're forgetting what kind of movie you are here. Yeah, uh, because exactly. it's just like you you can't now like introduce the horror and the the suspense. <laughs> you, you know, like you have to earn that, and it just felt like it, we're just yeah. kind of like, well, this is how the other movies do it, so we're gonna do it too. And it yeah. just, it doesn't, it doesn't work. <laughs> no, so that's why, like, you no, know, I, it's not a show-stopping <laughs> finale no. for me. Well, the suspense of, of that particular kill doesn't grip me. But when, once Billy's back, I, I just love the playful nature he has when the kids, ru- when the little kid rushes him uh, at the door. And he's just, and he's just got this little kind of, what? You know, smirk yeah. on his face. <laughs> like... And she's like, that's just not a Santa Claus. And your favorite character steps forward. And then she gets all the children away. And then, because this is what gets me on board with it, the injustice of it. I am mm-hmm. so pissed. The first time I saw this movie, I thought he was going to kill her, the Mother Superior. And the fact that he didn't ruined my Christmas. It made me, <laughs> it made me so angry yeah. because he's a victim. You know, even even with everything that he's done, He's he's got that Norman Batesy thing going where it's like yes he has perpetrated all of these acts of violence and murder, but all because he wasn't raised right. He wasn't you know reared in a way that ever could have helped him be the sweet boy we perceive him to be on the surface. You know, and so the fact that he's laying there, and the one solemn victory he gets to kind of like profess to the children is. Santa Claus is gone. And then he just dies. And what I love is the lock and load of it all because, oh, I hate, even when he falls and Mother Superior like pulls her arm while he's gripping her arm, Mm -hmm. like saying like, you're responsible for me being the way I am, you know, or you're in part, certainly, but a major player. And she just pulls her arm back in disgust, like get, get off my knife, but not, (laughs) you know, funny. (laughs) Not funny and endearing like Chucky, but <laughs> but the fact that like the next the last shot is exactly what I want to see, which is little Ricky, <laughs> not little Ricky Ricardo, little Ricky, mm-hmm. uh, his brother, just looking with the stink face on, just going naughty. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, such a payoff! I love it, I, and I was ready for another movie immediately i was ready for the movie to continue and just watch ricky go on the rampage um so that's me that's how i feel okay. about this film <laughs> well i'm, I'm glad that we, we got that all out <laughs> <laughs> thanks for sharing yeah <laughs> yeah i think all in all like i it's it's fun but i just i just think it, it just has too many setbacks that you know mm. it doesn't work it's not it's not a, like a good slasher to me. It's not a holiday uh, movie that I would like routinely put on, like like a Black Christmas OG, uh, sure, 1974, sure. or or Batman right. Returns, or like Die Hard, or you know, like fun, Home Alone, or you know, like just fun. <laughs> okay, shit like that. but um, Home Alone is not that dark. It's dark, but it's not yeah. that dark. Yeah. But um, but yeah, it's okay. It's it's good. It's it's okay. it's not the worst, 
uh, movie for me that we've covered on this podcast thus far. I'll, I'll, I'll give it that. But it's it's on the, the re- lower <laughs> echelon for sure. <laughs> I'd be really anxious to hear what you have to say about the sequels then. Because, yeah. wow. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, like the second one is wow. pretty connected. Yeah. to Wow. Yeah. The second one is pretty connected to this. I mean, a little too much. Um, do you all know? I remember, all yeah, I've seen it. I like. I, oh, I mostly it, remember okay. like you know, garbage day. You know. Like, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that the first forty minutes of part two are basically like. Don't tell me. Condensed... I don't remember. You know. <laughs> oh, you don't remember? Okay, 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 okay. But the sequels that follow really go off the rails. Yeah. There's still kind of like a character here and there, or a mention here and there. So um, it's kind of like I mean, the Jaws I mean, franchise. Kind of. I mean, they still largely kind of focus on, like, the Brody family. Whereas with this one, it's different. Okay. It's different. Like, they... they the, sure the, 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 the At strength some point. of the connectivity yeah. gets stretched thinner and thinner as yeah. the sequels go on. <laughs> at at, at so, yeah. some point, we'll, uh, I don't know if we'll cover them here, but, you know, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll get on that. But uh, okay. anyway... Let's get to the cherry picker. It's not like they killed him. On purpose. Okay, first order of business, we need a cherry on top. And I'm I'm just gonna throw this out there. You know, I mentioned it earlier, but little Chrissy, you know, like just she's just so sweet. I, I just love that the line delivery of just like the mother superior. It's <laughs> Okay, I, I just because I believe Robert Brian Wilson deserves to be a contender, I will raise his name. But 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 on the grounds that this is probably one of the only things you like about the movie, I'll I will concede. Let's oh, I don't care. You, you can you can you can give it to to what's his name, Brian. R- Robert Brian Wilson. Okay, yeah, because he's, he's like an Brian icon. Austin. He's still. Green, like, no, he still run, he still works the convention circuit. Oh, he and the guy who plays his brother uh, in the sequel. Mm. Um, they still and uh, actually, uh, my friend John Carlos was at a convention of, like a week ago and saw the two of them like chatting and thought it would be so crass just to like take a photo of them. But he wanted to really badly, and I I understand the impulse because they're kind of like titans of dark Christmas for me. <laughs> but he, okay, well you uh, you're you have a better relationship with the movies, so whatever your your cherry on top is, I'm fine with that. It, it, okay. We could put a little window of little Chrissy like, you know, just like in the the Maraschino I don't runner up. I don't know. Okay, we well, figure yeah, it out. Stop, stop <laughs> making new things that we have to do. <laughs> new tears. <laughs> So, Cherry Picker, last week we asked you who deserves to die the most in Pearl. Uh-huh. I nominated the director, the, the casting director. You nominated Mitzi. Yeah. Or Mitz. 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 Mittens. Mittens. <laughs> <laughs> Mittens. And yeah. uh, across <laughs> Patreon, Instagram, and YouTube... We have 535 for the director versus 88 for Mitzi. Oh, thank you, my little piano keys, for voting (laughs) for me, but we we couldn't pull through. (laughs) I want to hear. Jeremy Huff says, my vote goes to the director. I was hoping we'd get Mm -hmm. a scene of Pearl stalking him before killing him. Mitzi Mm. did no wrong other than not getting out of there much sooner. I did, however, like the reveal of uh, to why... Pearl hates blondes, which we we discussed <laughs> yes, <laughs> in in X. You it. You know, which is like, yeah. Oh, Howard, you know I hate blondes, or you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Wrangle says I voted the director for being judgmental and dismissing Pearl mainly for her looks. In Mitzi's defense, it's not her fault. Uh, they may have picked her, and she was the one who invited and notified Pearl of the audition in the first place. I think that's grounds for more so for dying, <laughs> but okay. Whale Next. Wolf says the fact Mitzi was even a choice makes no sense. <laughs> Mitzi was legit uh, nicer listen than... Listen to the pod. 
<laughs> Mitzi was legit nicer than probably anyone, and to say she's dumb is insane. During Pearl's speech, oh. uh, Pearl automatically assumed Mitzi got the part because she's younger and blonde, but Mitzi didn't get the part. She was just as nervous as Pearl uh, was, so her bombing isn't that crazy, and there were other blondes on the lineup. Mitzi was a great friend to Pearl, so Mitzi being a choice over the mother is a choice. Howard is garbage for staying with Pearl after she snatched um, Mitzi. I refuse to respect that opinion. Don't mess with the blondes. Helen, Tatum, Mitzi, Paige, Casey. Who's Paige? Paige. Not Paige from Valentine. Paige. Paige. Who? I don't. I. That's the only page I can Casey. think of right now. Okay. Paige, Casey, Cece, Tina, Buffy, Anya. Anya's not a blonde. She goes back and forth. And all the girlies yeah. are great. There's six replies. Maybe someone asks who's... who's. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, also, like, who said that she didn't get the role? She full-on admits it in the movie. Watch the movie again. Darling. I mean, there is a case to be made. Yeah, I don't see anything about Paige. Yeah, please. Like, who who is Paige? Um, there's a case to be made that she didn't. And because at that moment, like, Pearl's like don't lie to me. I know you got it. So she was just kind of like, is this what I need to say to get out of here? Sort of. It was almost I, like at that okay. point, at yeah. that point, it was just like, it, you know, either or, but like Pearl saying that she knows she got it. Like there's no, there's no actual way for her to know. Mm, okay. I, I disagree, but whatever. That's what this is all about. Yeah. People's uh, differing, differing perspectives. Next. Yeah. I mean, I can look at both, but, you know, you you do you, whatever. <laughs> SB says the only bad thing Mitzi did was not run faster. <laughs> like I said, she should have, like, yeah. full-on gotten on that bike and, uh, yeah, and taken right. off. Um, right. Ace Yummy says I would have chosen Pearl's mother. Personally, Mitzi was likable to me. The director was fine, too, but he wasn't more likable than Mitzi, so he gets the shaft. The director was fine. I don't agree with that. Uh, That's. I mean, it's pretty typical behavior in an audition setting. Sad to say, but yeah, that doesn't make it right. I yeah, think, I think he's. I think he is disgusting. Yeah, he could have handled it a lot. Yeah, better. they could have just been like, "We're only auditioning blondes," you know, like you know, save all. Those... In which case, don't let her audition if you know on site. Yeah. That she's not what you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, shithead, there was like shithead. yeah, there was all these like brunettes. Uh, running off crying because they didn't get it for, for that Jesus. very reason. Terrible. So it's just like, why waste someone's Sunday? Or it probably wasn't Sunday because yeah. it was a church, but, Whatever. you know, Saturday uh, to get all <laughs> gussied up to go down to Afternoon. the church to to and and practice their, their song and dance routine just to get, you know, mm -hmm. like... Uh, bowled over. It's just, it's not nice. And it's it's naughty, really. It's, that's what it is. <laughs> um, Michael, or sorry, uh, sucked uh, the director because that dance routine was phenomenal and they could have used Pearl for something else. Mm. Yeah. I I do question, though, like how much of the, the routine, like was it actually yeah. her right. like pulling off like a great routine or was it all in her head? Sort of yeah, thing. that's what I love too. I love not knowing that in yeah. her head she was doing the show stopping number, but she could have just been doing like kickball change, kickball change, <laughs> full on. I'm just like down. reminded of like Family Guy. <laughs> uh, there's like, I, I think there's like one where like Peter and Lois like got really high, like they were like folk song performers oh. and they're just like yeah like getting really high like gives us our our edge it just like makes us better musicians and it just shows them and like in their mind they're like like pulling it off really well like everyone's applauding but then you like cut to like reality and they're both like rolling around on the floor just like screeching right. like dying cats uh -huh. <laughs> like, uh, the they did something similar in it's always sunny in philadelphia where the whole group went back <laughs> to like a high school reunion and got wasted and then yeah wanted to do this badass choreographed dance that they did and they kicked ass but it was all in their mind's eye and at the very end you see they're all just kind of like like one's just standing there going, <laughs> and, every, and somebody's spinning on the floor yeah. someone's full-on passed out you know that kind of thing i mean yeah. that would have been hilarious for 
Pearl. <laughs> but Pearl. it would have but it would have like <laughs> taken something away from it. Like I liked the I like the the ambiguity. Like I, I prefer that. I don't yeah, I, I don't want to see her t- and it and it makes it all the more like crushing when you know he's just like thank you but next because like you really like yeah. oh wow like that was amazing sort of thing like at least some acknowledgement of, of that but you know if if like we had actually seen that pearl was just like <laughs> so uncoordinated <laughs> and shit, then i would have been like yeah girl like you she was just a, yeah you're, <laughs> she was just up there doing hip hip thrusts it would and... <laughs> almost be like to just tell her that like you know we're, we're looking for someone blonde it's almost like a, a gentle way of of just like, <laughs> let her know darling you can't dance yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i i do like to believe that she 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 actually did everything that she did in her mind just on a bare stage She's a star. i like believing that but yes but the ambiguity that. is fun yeah it, it just lends more to it what would anybody else say anything? uh yes michael ryan the director for picking people based on looks and not talent was very surprised she let him time. was very surprised she let him make it to the end of the film sans a pitch for him uh, uh mandejo right. says neither really did anything bad but the director gets it because mitzi was nice uh blue box 87 <laughs> the director for not being able to see that pearl is a star <laughs> Sasha Ricky asks what evil sort nominated Sweet Mitzi oh dear god not Me. Sweet Mitzi I, I know right she was my favorite character no I mean this is the thing I even said it when I nominated her this isn't based off of like you know some kind of like vitriol I feel for the character or anything. <laughs> it's just bitch get out yeah you you get you get what you deserve if you yeah. don't self preserve you know yeah. ooh it rhymes I, I came up with a little saying yeah <laughs> uh, Thomas Baker the director but I would have put Pearl's mother on here I, she was <sighs> there's a case to be made for her but I feel that she's just as much a a victim yeah as, right like you know of, of, like it, the problem is I feel bad for her yeah. when she dies like that that's a rough way to go yeah. the way. Uh, Pearl She's, took her out. I was not doing a victory lap yeah. for Pearl when that happened. Pearl's mo- like Ruth, uh, the character's name. Like, like yeah. she's no saint, but she's also no mother superior. No. Uh, just, just a title. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we are here. Um, <laughs> the Chris Cullen, um, maybe Pearl or her mom. <laughs> I thought about nominating Pearl, but we made her the cherry on top. And how do you make someone the cherry yeah. on top and the the cherry? Pepper? I yeah, I could not nominate Pearl for. I mean, no, just yeah. just because I really can't get behind what she does yeah. as far as like the killing and everything. Yeah. But well, you also didn't. I I, I, don't, I I don't remember what you said exactly, but when we did our ex cherry picker. Um, cause I even mentioned, cause you, you chose Howard and I'm just, well, what about Pearl? And you're just like, no, like you, I think you had some sort of affinity to her. I, I'd have to listen to that episode again. Yeah. But, I don't remember. Yeah. I think she's too interesting also. I think she yeah. was also, she seemed, she seemed not right in the head and he was someone who should have known better. So the caretaker, yeah. mm, caretaker energy bothers me in a, <laughs> in a hor- horror uh, yeah. scenario go on king blueberry <laughs> asks oh what did mitzi ever do to anyone the uh, answer's in the rashim pod rashim <laughs> says rashim says the director gets my vote simply for those creepy piercing eyes side note i must admit i didn't enjoy pearl as much as x oh, i'm sorry to wow. hear that uh mm-hmm. zedward gory whichever one of you picked mitzi i'm guessing zach oh <gasps> Oh. Should be ashamed? Why me? What do you, I'm I'm practical with my nominations. <laughs> All she ever did was try to be polite. I gotta go with the director for his complicity in upholding Western beauty standards. But if I could pick anyone from this film, it would be the projectionist. He gave big love him and leave him energy. I even half expected oh. him to film a pornographic scene with Pearl, then cut and run putting the film on exhibition but he didn't but he didn't and they were both like not long-term prospect type people i mean anyway (laughs) yeah i disagree i Uh, think she knew full well what she was walking into whether it was a figment of her imagination or not i also love your why me (laughs) and on christmas (laughs) 
<laughs> I just, but this is like, this just reeks of like, this is like you, like, you know, like, uh, Tree's mother in Happy Death Day. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, have people not been paying attention? I stand by my choice. I stand, yes, I, the I, table I think Tree's, thing, yeah. I think Tree's mother di- deserves to die more than, uh, than Mitzi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poor uh, Mittens. <laughs> Poor dumb Mittens. Kira Wood, the director and Pearl's mom. DP, I guess the director. Honestly, this was a movie where I didn't find anyone insufferable except the antagonist. Is that, who who's the antagonist? Like Pearl? That... I guess. I don't but know. But she's also the pro. She's the antagonist she's and the, the protagonist. Like that's weird. Uh, that's hard. Uh, yeah. I, don't I would know say the antagonist is her mother. Uh, her, probably her mother. Yeah. Maybe she's, that I don't I don't know maybe that's who uh, DP is talking about but um, yeah she's a Fender one <laughs> uh, John Carlos McMaster oh. I can't fault Mitzi for tripping but I can fault the director for being an asshole Zach wins this round <laughs> <laughs> thanks John Carlos thank you John he's the one who showed me who showed me Silent Night Deadly Night for the first time so. Oh. Full circle. Full circle. <laughs> uh, Neon Icon uh, asks, why not both? Because you know the rules. Um, yeah, you got to pick. And Ashley Picker. Williams, as the director, of course, he doesn't know a star when he sees one. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, honestly, like, I, I, I think I know where you're going, and I don't, I, you know... It's it, just because it's Christmas. I want to, you know, give you <laughs> what you want. Um, <laughs> and anyway, this, this I, my first choice anyway was going to be. I don't even know if the character has a name, but like, I get like the bad Santa, like the the the, robber, the burglar Santa. The, what's his name? Yeah. Um, here I'm looking at it right now because yeah. he is Killer Santa. Killer Santa. Killer Santa. For just played by Charles yeah, For just for I mean for just everything. I mean he's the mm-hmm. he is the catalyst. Uh, of of this whole movie happening, yeah. he's uh, just like a a degenerate person who's who's you know freely murders people, uh, is rude to them when he does it, um, it, sexual assault, like killing a family with two ch- like a baby, yeah, yeah. Uh, on Christmas too. I'll throw that in there, even though I <laughs> made fun of it. But it's slow just, clap, yeah. <laughs> but you know, for all those reasons, and the fact that he just disappears, we don't find out what happened to him. We don't, you know, he doesn't get uh, his uh, comeuppance ever. We, you know, we could have found out that like the police tracked him down, shot him. Like, if anything, he's the one that Billy should be going after at, at the end if he, you know, could track oh. him down. Hmm. But that's that's my nom. <laughs> Your nom. Yeah. He said when you said the first thing, when I hear nom, I think Vietnam. So I'm like, that's my nom. Is it's that, trauma. That you know, it's, it's PTSD. <laughs> okay. Um, cool. Um, I'm I'm surprised you didn't pick the other heavy, but um, thank you. I guess we'll see Merry, if I should be Merry Christmas. You. you know. Well, maybe I'll thank you next week, but maybe I won't. Who knows? You could still win. Well, I think that I, I think regardless, I think that you're you're appreciative that you got. You know, <laughs> I could have chosen either of them, but I will say that yeah, he's definitely the first domino, and and a, he's offender one yeah. in this in this uh, scenario. But I will choose wholeheartedly Mother Superior on the grounds that, I mean, we made an argument for like why the boy Billy could have recovered from the grandpa situation. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a case to be made for him finding some path forward out of you know the darkness maybe maybe he would never celebrate christmas the same way again or look at it the same way and you know because that that's really severe trauma to go through um but that said maybe he didn't have to become a full-on killer himself had he not been shaped by this domineering self-righteous um abusive to the point of illegal acts being committed against this child. When she tied him to the bed to keep him from getting out of bed, immediately my mind went to everything like, what if he has to go to the bathroom? 
What if um his what if the kids fuck with him? What if there's a fire? What if like the the top bunk falls on him and he gets? I mean, you know, I just thought I just thought like there's too many things that that, that and also uh, Sister Margaret's pretty bad in that moment too because that should not be allowed. That's illegal tying a child to their bed. You, that's what people get put away for. So Mother Superior, fuck you. Um, and also just again like as much as I'm. Uh, 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 compelled by uh, the actress's uh, willingness to play Dimension the same way Louise Fletcher did as Nurse Ratchet. She believed she was doing the right thing mm -hmm. the whole time she was doing it. Um, that makes it even scarier, actually, because how many other children were abused the way Billy was? How many other... I mean, he had a long time away from her, and look how he turned out. Look how Ricky's probably going to turn out. Everyone, and we mentioned, every one of those children at that orphanage has now witnessed Santa Claus being murdered twice. So what are they going to do with that with every Christmas that follows? There could conceivably be a whole ne network of uh, Christmas. There should be a series, a Silent Night, Deadly Night series that just chronicles each orphan's like kind of like trauma manifest. Netflix, get and, on it. Yeah, I know, right? I am on board. But that said... She, that would make her, because she is, even though the trauma that he keeps recurring in his in his mind whenever he kills is that initial one, the person who becomes kind of like the symbol of everything that he needs to control and that he needs to punish, the reason he feels even the need to punish, um, was all reinforced by Mother Superior. So I think she's, yeah. Okay. There you go. Killer. <laughs> Killer. And the fact that she survives fucking pisses me off. Both of them survive. Like, but yeah. Uh, uh, so that, there you have it. Your nominations are Killer Santa or Mother Superior. And you can vote on Patreon, uh, Instagram, or YouTube here in the community tab. Uh, I did make a little snafu last week uh, in welcoming new Patreon supporters because I just repeated the same thing from the week before. So uh, just a few new names to mention that I uh, missed last week, but we have uh, Dimas Raharjo. Yay! Uh, I Pebra. Yay! James Doss. Yay! Lily Blasco. And Yay! Sarah Burt. Yay! I, mean, I started doing it, so I have yeah. to do it for everyone. But thank you, guys. <laughs> Welcome aboard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I also want to thank Andre Felix, who is our podcast Yay! editor. And uh, if you do want to support us on Patreon, the uh, lowest tier, the pinhead tier, does get you early access to all of our podcasts in video and audio format uh, that usually come out uh, like five days ish before they are regularly uploaded uh but we also have the cherry picker after dark which is available to anyone uh supporting on my patreon on the freddy tier or higher and uh that is once every month and this month we are doing jawbreaker because Ooh. it just felt like a, a, <laughs> a christmas movie I, I i don't know but it's it's fun. It's it's yeah. it's cult, and uh, <laughs> so check that out if you're if you're so inclined to to support the podcast because that does help us out too, and and uh, we're throwing out that extra content in there. Uh, where can they find you on social media? Uh, at Edward is truth one word on Instagram. And uh, if you type in Edwards, it is truth on YouTube, you'll find me. So just do that. Yeah, that's a channel. Okay. And, How about you, Zach Cherry? You can find me on Instagram at Retro Bitch Face. I'm on YouTube, Zach Cherry, Z A C K C H E R R Y. And Twitter, Zach Cherry 8. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm gone. I'm not yeah. on Twitter anymore. Twitter's hard. Twitter's hard. I don't, I, yeah. Um, because <laughs> I try to make a Twitter for for the, the cherry picker. It's just like it's just extra work. I don't get the algorithm. Mm -hmm. But if you do want to follow the podcast uh, on social media, uh, please subscribe if you are 
you know, watching us on YouTube right now. If you are watching us on YouTube and you're new to the Cherry Picker, you can also listen to these episodes. The RSS feed link is in the descriptions down below. And if you are listening to us, like, yeah, come to YouTube. But uh, we're also on Instagram at the Cherry Picker Pod. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, did I forget anything else? Ah, what do we got going on next week? Is it the one with the Pesite Show? in america why do you call it that <laughs> <laughs> i just want to make sure the, um, I don't wanna... it is yes okay it's american psycho it's american then. psycho That's... next next week yeah. we're closing out the also year. a christmas movie <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it is of. sort of also yeah like happy holidays to i almost said merry christmas but you know happy holidays Ooh, to to everyone happy like holidays if, if, if you're into that yeah you know. um yeah if you're if it's your thing yeah, yeah. We need, I wish there and was, like, not... a good, like, Jewish, uh, like, Hanukkah horror movie. We'll have to look into that. Ooh, I mean, but, <clears throat> yeah. But the thing is, like, it's not just that, like, there's so many different holidays uh, that it's just, like, you're, yeah. almost, you're like, leaving so many out um, by, by pigeonholing <laughs> it as just Christmas. But I I think that, yeah, there I, I'm pretty sure, if not, like, New Year's, there's there's some sort of Christmassy stuff. We'll find out because I haven't watched American Psycho so. in a while. I feel like he's wearing antlers at some point or something, isn't he? I don't remember. Maybe it seems like yeah, something maybe. something that he would be yeah, forced right? into. It's been a minute since I've seen it, it, and I like the movie. Yeah. But but yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's crazy. The years winding down, like cause, right. yeah, because American Psycho is the last episode of 2022 for us. So Woo! anyway, uh, we will be we will be back for American Psycho next week. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening and. Thank you.